Hey guys, DIY Maniac here. It's been a while since I put up a video, so I thought I would make one on the installation of my voltmeter on my John Deere D105 lawn tractor. Now this uh, installation is pretty much universal on any John Deere or pretty much any lawn tractor, um, so you could use it on yours as well. Now they might be asking why would I need a voltmeter on a lawn tractor? I don't need it, I wanted it. I like to modify, I like DIY. So that's the way why I went ahead and did it. Now it's also a good way to monitor battery power, battery life. So as we can see, I put it on the dash using a blank space I already had on the dash. I drilled a hole in the dash. Now this gauge I got off eBay, it's a smaller gauge, as you can see here. It measures on the low side, five volt, on the high side, 24. What I used to make the hole was a spade bit, a one and one eighth inch spade bit to drill the hole into the dash and that made a nice snug opening for the gauge to uh, be inserted into. Now for the wiring of the gauge, I'm gonna go through that because what I wanted to do was not have the gauge powered all the time. Uh, I could have easily taken the wires and take them right off the battery, but the gauge would always be on uh, constantly. And I didn't want that. There's no sense for the gauge to be on when the mower's not in use and you're not using it yourself. So I, I uh, pigtailed off a lead that was only hot, only got 12 volts when the key was in any of the on positions. So as we can see now, the key is off, so the gauge is off. Now if we turn the key to any of the on positions, whether it's headlight, on, or the start, it's going to be energized, powered, and now we have our reading. So we have the 12.6 volt. We come to the on, it's on as well, and we go back to off, it turns off. So the way I achieved that for the wiring, we're gonna come under the dash. I'm gonna use a flashlight so you guys could see uh, hopefully better. If we look here under the dash, we could see the backside of the volt gauge. So as you can see, it comes through the dash. It has a locking ring um, that screws on, but with the one and one eighths hole, it fits very snug but still suggest you use the locking ring that comes with it. We can see my two leads coming from the gauge. So we have the power and the ground. For the power, I, like I said, I wanted to only be hot when the key was in the on position. So what I did is I pigtailed off the ignition switch. Now the wire you're gonna wanna use is the yellow wire on, the on top. Um, as you can see there, you can see two yellow wires. It's gonna be the one on the right which was on the, the high side of the, uh, the plug of the ignition switch. That one is only energized when the key is in any of the on positions and has no power when in the off position. So that's the one I use. So we could see here where I pigtailed it. Uh, you can see the shrink wrap I used. So I snipped the wire, I put a pigtail into it, shrink wrapped it to protect it from the elements, and then ran that up to my voltmeter uh, for the power. Now for the ground, I use an existing ground that I already had for my 12 volt accessory plug. So I just put a double spade, uh, double blade connector on and pigtail off it to get to share the ground. Now if we look on the power wire at the voltmeter, as you can see that one has um, a double, a double uh, blade connector as well, which means it has two males, one female being used to power the gauge and a spare female. That one's going to be used for a future video. Uh, what I'm going to be using that one for is to run power for a push to start button. Um, so basically a momentary switch that instead of having to turn the key to start, you just put the key in the on position, push the button and it'll start. Pretty much like your newer cars on uh, that are out today. Once again, it's not a need to have, it's I wanted to have it and another nice modification to do. So I'm going to be um, detailing that in a um, future video, um, hopefully coming soon. So I just removed the plug just so you guys can see the exact wire. So if you look at the back of the plug, it's the top yellow wire that is the one I used. Here you can see the uh, shrink wrap, um, soldered connection with shrink wrap and then the pigtail coming off. Um, so that's the one you're going to be wanting to look at. Unfortunately, there's no markings on the back of the connector to really tell you um, the exact pin location. But like I said, when you look up, it's it's the uh, one on top. And as well, you'll be able, um, I do suggest using a test light or a um, an ohm meter, a voltmeter, just to, you know, double check that that is powered only uh, when the key is in the on position. 
but that's the one I use and it, um, it worked out great so we can plug that back in so as you can see it's uh, it's that one there on top that was just a quick little video unfortunately I filmed it after doing the install but I still wanted to show you guys anyways for anyone that was interested in doing this if you have any questions feel free to hit me up in the comments I'll be more than happy to respond uh, like I say keep your eyes open for future installs which is going to be the push start uh, button push button start that I'll be doing uh, hopefully within the next couple of weeks and then once that's done, I'm going to be putting up another video with a, a full walk around and review of the John Deere D105 lawn tractor. So thank you very much, guys, for, uh, for watching. And keep your eyes open for the next video.